Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at whatever you'd like to call this scene. Now, as you can probably tell, there's quite a bit to it and I don't think I'm going to be able to get around to showing you all of it, but hopefully I can show you enough to make it worth your while. So let's get cracking. So here we are in a new project. Let's just check up on it. It's 1920-1080, it's 24 frames a second, and the duration is 10 seconds. Now the first thing I'm going to do is come over to the library and I'm going to bring in some clouds like that. Come to the inspector. I want to set the width and height to 40. 96. Then what I want to do is come over to Filters and Stylize and Pixelate. And I want to set this scale to 300. So now you can see we've got this sort of cycling grid of squares. So the next thing we're going to do is come to Filters and Distortion and Bulge. We're going to set the amount to 1920 and the scale to 2. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the library and I'm going to grab the grid and I'm going to drag it in to a new group at the top there. We want to set the background opacity down to zero. And let's set the line width to something like 15. And then we're going to set this background width and height initially to the same as our pixelate. So that's a value of 300. And then we're going to take this bulge and we're going to copy it onto the grid. So that's holding down the Option key, drag it onto the grid. Now we need to set our grid to be the same size as our background there, 4096 by 4096. And you'll see that despite the fact that we've kind of gone for the same numbers, so the pixel eight was 300 and the grid is 300, it doesn't quite fit. So we just need to do a little bit of adjustment. So I'm holding down the Command key as I do so, and I'm getting something like 286 for the width and for the height, 283 or something. Don't really know why that is not self-consistent, but I'm sure there's probably a good reason. So we want to give some color to this grid. So I'm going to come over to the library. I'm going to look for gradient and I'm going to drag in a gradient in between those two groups there to create a new group of its own. Let's come over and set up the gradient. Again, let's make it 4096 by 1496. And let's open up the gradient and let's set it to radial. So I'm just going to go through quickly and make some adjustments to these positions here and to the colours. But really what this gradient looks like is entirely up to your personal taste. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply an image mask to this gradient. So right click, add image mask. And the image mask source is going to be this group containing the clouds. And we're going to switch the source channel to luminance. And now you can see how we've got a sort of color cycling grid. Then we're going to take this group here and we're going to add a Gaussian blur to it. And we're also going to add a stylize and indent. Let's set the Gaussian blur amount to something like 64. Let's set the indent softness all the way up to one. And then we can really just play with these values reduce the ambient a little bit, increase the highlight brightness, reduce the highlight sharpness. And you see now we've got these sort of extruded light boxes. I might just add in over the top here a color and levels and just crunch the black a little bit more so the color is a bit more intense. Maybe just kind of bring the white in as well. So I've just done a little bit of tidy up here. So that grid is called grid and the light boxes are called light boxes. And I'm just going to put that group containing the clouds into this group here and close it on down. And we can close that light boxes group as well for the time being. So let's now focus on our grid. First thing I'm going to do is to this group, I'm going to apply a blur, Gaussian blur and a color levels and then a border and stroke, and then a stylize and indent. Just going to set this stroke color to have no saturation and kind of mid brightness. So let's come back to our Gaussian blur. Let's set the amount to 32. Ignore what I've done with the levels there because I've made a mistake that I'm going to come back and rectify later. 
Then let's come back to this stroke. Let's just slightly reduce that width, I think, just down to about sort of seven, I think is going to be good. And then if we want to adjust our indent filter, we could maybe increase that softness to something like 0.3 and reduce the ambient a bit like that, increase the highlight brightness and drop the highlight sharpness just to make it all a little bit crisper like that. So then let's make a new group and put these two groups into it. And let's make this new group 3D. And let's now add in a light. And let's set its intensity up to something like 750. I want to move this group back on Z. So let's move it back to something like negative, negative 500, I think is going to be just about right. And then with this light here, let's move it up on Y. So it's at 500. So it's kind of firing down from the top there. So the next thing I want to do is I want to grab the grid from out of this group here and holding down the option key, bring it into a new group. And I've called that foreground grid. So first of all, let's set this group to be 3D. Let's come down into it. Let's come to our grid. I want to reduce the scale here. So I'm going to go for 150 by 120. Let's come to the bulge and let's just reduce this amount down to 1440 and let's set the scale 2.6. And this is going to create these windows that are kind of bulging out towards us. So the opposite direction to the ones in the background. So then I want to come to my Gaussian blur. I want to increase this amount to 128. And then what I did wrong last time with my levels, and we probably should come back later and fix it, is I should have been working on the alpha, not the RGB. So I need to crunch down the white till we kind of fill in those windows like that, and maybe just a little bit of a tweak on the black as well. Let's just zoom in and see what we're doing. So let's go for, say, 1500. Now, something's going to go wrong here, which is that we haven't got a light in place for, to, for this to work. So what we need to do is duplicate our light, and then we need to move it out to say something like 1750. So it's in front of the windows that we're working on. And you can see the difference that makes. I'm just going to come to this group here with the grid in it, and I'm going to add a color and levels. And I'm just going to use this control here to just bring everything down quite a bit like this. Then I'm going to step into my stroke here. I'm going to switch the position to centered, and then I'm just going to increase this amount like so, until we get a, a slightly more interesting profile on that. So we've got a width of about 36 there. And I'm going to grab this fade inside. And you can see how that's kind of changing the profile in a kind of interesting way. And then what we need to do is come back into the grid. So we actually want to be able to fire through a central window. At the moment, we've got this crossbar in the way. And we can do that just by moving the center offset of the grid. So if I just move that over on X to something like that, 65, and then again, come down on Y, that's around negative 60. And now we've got a, a nice window that we can fire through. I'm going to come back to this light here that we were using to, to light up our front grid, and I'm going to bring it way down, probably to something like 20. And you can see that, that actually changes the profile as we go from that to that. So we probably need to actually stick at 50, I think, and then just use our levels control here to just bring down the level even more like that. So we probably got a little bit carried away with that. Let's come back and do a few other things. Um, I when I was setting up this original grid, I didn't set up my levels properly. So I'm just going to reset that. And instead of RGB, I'm going to use alpha. And then you'll probably notice that I'm actually changing that profile now using the alpha controls there, which I wasn't actually before. So the other thing I want to do with this background grid is to give it some animated lighting. And to do that, I'm going to come into the library and generators, and I'm going to look for clouds, and I'm going to bring that in. And come to the inspector. I want to set this to be 4096 by 4096. And then I'm going to right click on it, add image mask, and I'm going to use the grid as the source. I'm also going to turn the grid back on again. And then I'm going to come into the clouds and I'm just going to sort of simplify it a bit by just turning down some of these values. So just so we're left with 
that layer four strength. It just makes for a simpler look. And then what I'm going to do is come to the offset, select the Y offset, right click, add parameter behavior and ramp. And I'm going to set the end value to something like 0.5. And now you'll see we've kind of got this light that's running up over the top like that. So the only other thing we want to do here is to set these clouds to be add and they're not darkening it down. They're just adding that light effect. So another thing I want to do is come back down into my light boxes here. I want to make sure they're not being illuminated. So come into the lighting and switch to off. And now they will be sort of lighting themselves up and that's going to look more like actual light boxes. And I also want to add just a little bit of texture to them. And I'm going to do that using filters and stylize and add noise. And I'm going to turn off auto animate. White noise, I think, is probably fine for this. I'm just going to set that mix value down to something like 30. And I think that little bit of texture just helps with the look. So I'm just going to close everything down because it's all getting a little bit busy there. And what I want to do now is bring in my sort of icon that I can sit in the middle of this world. So I'm going to come to import and come to my assets folder and I'm going to select the thing called icon. Bring that in. It doesn't actually want to be there. So let's put it in its own group right at the top. Let's close down these other groups where it wanted to be. And let's just put this group in between those two. So it's sitting in there and I call that Icon. Let's first of all just scale it down. Let's go for something like that, I think. And actually, you'll notice that our foreground grid is a bit kind of off. Let's just adjust that generator till we've got a little bit more centered up on the logo like that. That's going to be better. OK, so enough of that. Let's come back to the icon and let's first of all make a clone of it. Right click, make clone layer and then let's duplicate the clone. Right click, duplicate. So let's turn off everything except that last clone. And actually, everything's kind of come in at 500. I actually want them to come in at zero. So let's select all three of those layers and just reset their Z position to be zero. And then let's actually reduce that scale back down again. Let's go for 35. So as I say, let's select this first layer here, this first clone. Let's come to filters and border and stroke. We don't want this to be red. We want it to be white. We also want to hide source. So it's literally just going to be an outline of everything like that. Let's turn back on this clone here. And to that, I'm going to apply filters and stylize and extrude. I want to set the distance to one and this back size to 0.94. And I also want to set that face brightness down to zero. And then this particular clone layer, I want to set its blend mode to add. So then the final step is to come to the library and bring in another cloud. So let's bring it in at the top of that group there. And then to that cloud, so we're going to add stylize and pixelate. And actually, first of all, let's just add to it an image mask. And for the image mask, let's select our original icon like that. And then let's zoom in a bit so we can gauge the amount of this pixelate filter. So I kind of want it to be something like that. So we kind of get about two, two and a half blocks per sort of width. I think what we can do with our clouds is actually have it maximum speed like that. So it's really kind of sparkling away. And I also want to add just a little bit of an extra detail, so distortion and bulge again. I'm just going to turn on the overlays and I'm just going to reduce this down. So we're just targeting that little center there. And I think the default bulge values are good. It just kind of creates a little bit of a sort of spherical dome to that center area. And let's actually now let's maybe just add in a camera. So bring in a camera. Let's give it a dolly. Let's also give it a sweep. Let's set this sweep to roll rather than swivel. Let's start at say 10 and end at negative five. And then this dolly, if we come to the end, let's just adjust that dolly position till we're sort of there. What have we got? Sort of 950 maybe. And you see we fly through that central window and we see our icon and all our lights in the background. 
I think just as we did with our pixelated fill for this icon, we also need to come back into this original group and those light boxes need to be moving a lot faster as well. And if you remember, those were originally driven by that very first thing we created, which was that clouds right down in there. So let's just set their speed up to two as well. And that's just creating a much more lively environment. So I think I might actually stop there. Uh, there's so much more that really needs to be done to make it look great. And if I were to try and show you all of it, it would obviously make this tutorial much too long. There is just one thing I would like to point out though, and I'll show you how to do it. So I'm going to come back to, into this original group here. I'm going to turn off the camera while I do it. I'm going to come to the library text generators and numbers, and just going to drag it into this group here. Let's come to the inspector. For the format, we would need to choose a monospaced font, so anything fixed width. I went with whatever this one is called, very complicated name. And make sure it's the alignment is set to left. So, well, can't we see it? Let's move it over on X, move it out to here, just so I can show you exactly what I mean. So, text generator. Come to the generator tab. We obviously we want a kind of pretty big number here. So let's go for 15,000 for the end and 12,000 for the start. We don't want a thousand separator. Let's crank up the minimum digits to the max and let's just move it over a bit more on X like that. A little bit up on Y. Now it's not quite sitting right in relation to that little window there. And what we can do is just adjust the shear like that, just a little bit of shear till its angle is looking a bit better, like so. And then those numbers probably want to be blurred a little bit, so let's add a Gaussian blur to them like that. So you can kind of do that for each of the windows. Let's turn the camera back on again so we see this in action. So there you go, those numbers kind of just adds a sort of life to the scene. You kind of don't necessarily notice they're there, but you, you just know kind of lots going on. So anyway, as I say, I think I'll stop there. But thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again soon.